What are the eight tips you need to know to sell your home for top dollar? We're going to tell you that today. Hey, hi, I'm Tony Meyer with Windermere Real Estate. I've got special guest David Smith with Beacon Davenport Staging. David's here to tell us all about the things we need to know, make sure our home is prepared and ready to sell for top dollar. Right, David? That is correct. So uh, we're going to get on to the first tip that David's going to talk about. We're going to talk about What's your title, David? Color, yes or no. Color is a very sensitive subject. Most people do not realize that a personal color choice for your home when you're living in it is very different than when you're selling it. Color goes through several different emotional scales with buyers, and the critical thing to remember when you're preparing your home for sale is the first place color is noticed is on a digital screen, whether it's a phone, a tablet, or a computer, it gets amplified exponentially whenever a buyer is looking at a potential property. Red and blues are the most extreme colors there are, and they don't read true in digital imagery, so it's better to take them out of a space. As we go through these photos here that are perfect examples of what not to do to sell a property, you'll see how extreme these colors are. If we move to the next photo, this is a very extreme dark blue bathroom and by toning this bathroom this dark and where it's at on the lower section of a house, this room reads incredibly black whenever you get photos in there. You'll see we've purposely added a lamp to this space to try and bring in more light, which is not possible. So whenever you have a space like this, if you have a space like this in your home, as much as you love the color, you need to decide that it's time to part with the color and go back to a neutral white or a neutral cream that will best show the light and the size of the space. So David, when you're walking through with a client and helping them through this process, how do you articulate, you know, they, maybe they picked that color because they thought it was their special color, it's their favorite color, and how do you help them understand that we're not selling the home to them, but we're selling it to the marketplace and the target client for that? It, it can be extremely challenging for a seller to understand that their personal choices are not going to resonate well with everybody else. The way I explain this is we have to create motivation for 50,000 eyes to have a reason to come and see the property. And the relationships that we have with the brokers we work with, especially with like what we have with Tony, his responsibility is selling it to the people when they show up. Our responsibility is getting them to the door. The way I explain it is it's nothing personal against your style, but it, it, it can react extremely adversely with a buyer and it begins the to-do list. And that to-do list means work. The more work you create for them to get into the home, the less interested they are in buying the home. You look at paint, it's one of the, the least expensive things a seller can do, but, right. but it's oftentimes the thing the buyer remembers. Oh, it's the greenhouse, it's the right. red house. It's, it's the a, dark blue bathroom exactly, <laughs> that I have to yes. see every day. The cave, yeah. We're on to clutter now. So clutter is the easiest thing to solve. It is the biggest enemy in stealing space and undervaluing space in a property. Whenever you look at your home, the thing that I tell every seller is, when in doubt, take it out. Because you don't wanna see personal photos, you don't wanna see boxes filled with things that are on shelves, you don't wanna see your mementos and collectibles from your travels. The last thing we actually want a buyer to remember is you and everything about you. Right. Because when they walk into a property and something catches their eye, that's what they're going to remember. They're not gonna remember how great a property is. They may remember the property because of your collection of china or teacups on a shelf, but they're not gonna remember the house, which is what they're actually in the business to look for is buying a house. Or the family photo wall that That's features right. the kids for it's, every It's year what I call the wall of fame. Right, right, <laughs> Nobody exactly. Nobody should have a wall of fame. Right, and so you've got a great picture of the yard here, all the kids' toys out. Um, the children, children are a very sensitive subject. A lot of people yeah. tend to lose sight of that fact that whenever you're buying a house or selling a house, that the small family members still have to be comfortable in the home. Unfortunately, the small family members aren't making the decisions. And whenever right. somebody walks into a property, and th this backyard is a great backyard, but it's full of toys because it's a very active play area for kids, you need to put them away. Find a, find a place you can put them away and make it an activity for the children 
to participate in so that they do not feel like they're disconnected from what's going on for their personal space. Right, an opportunity for them to get all their toys out and That's then right. an opportunity for them to put it all away, right? We encourage our clients to have like maybe a toy basket, something hidden away. Exactly. So they've got all the, the toys at the kid's disposal and a place that mom can easily tidy them up when they get that That's quick right. phone call or dad is the case be. So next thing we're gonna talk about personal style. Personal style is great for how you're defining your home to live in for you but you can never expect a buyer to understand your value in that design choice. The, the first picture that we're gonna see here is an extreme personal style <laughs> choice. This is literally the first room you see when you come through the front door of this particular property. So this is the house that literally this bathroom sat on the market for four months until we finally convinced the seller to paint and then it sold the first open house after with no price change, no change in anything else, but a buyer walks in and sees this as nothing but work to try and right. rectify when they, when they don't like it. And those become speed bumps to the sale, right? That's right. The, the more speed bumps you create, the, the more likely the buyer's not going to move forward, right? That, that's exactly uh, it. And, 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 you know, you think about this, is this isn't a huge deal. It's a, it's a gallon of paint in an afternoon. Uh, but to a buyer, that seems like a momentous task. Right. It's, and especially when a buyer has to consider everything else that they're about to go through just right. to get into the house yeah. is... Uh, I'm guessing the bed spread on this one, but... The, the, <laughs> the, this particular subject on personal style is actually really important because while paint is the least expensive investment you can make in a property with the largest return possible to help sell a house, this particular bedding is extremely expensive, expensive bedding. It's not a piece that's going to resonate to anybody else. Right. So everything else about this room was great furniture wise. We just needed to convince them to go to a neutral point where people could appreciate a walkout basement bedroom with a very small window and no natural light. And this bedding actually drains the light out of the room. It's the first thing you see and it's what stands out exactly. in that space, right? Uh, last one, oh, wallpaper, my the, favorite. The wonderful world of wallpaper. <laughs> <laughs> wallpaper is as personal a choice as you can get when it comes to design. And if you have it, seriously consider removing it. There are lots of products on the market and lots of professionals in the market that can actually go over wallpaper if it's installed properly, where right. they can clean it up, retexturize it, and paint it. It's far less adverse than damaging the drywall and painting. But I don't recommend keeping wallpaper in a property unless it is truly going to work with the architecture and style of a home. I bought a house with wallpaper. I know what it's like to take wallpaper down. Thankfully, a lot of times nowadays, they can go over the top of it. Right. And the cost for a seller is quite a bit less as a result of that. They're not damaging, as you said, the drywall in the process. And being, as you said, wallpaper is just such a personal item. It Either is. You love it or you don't. And most people don't. don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everything wrong. So this is a really interesting one because I looked at the photos that you sent me and you know, the spaces look okay, but right. uh, we're going to talk about that. So the, this property is a perfect example of truly doing everything wrong to try and represent this home well. And this home would have actually shown on the market better empty. And the reason why is because every trick in the book is being used here to try and define space. They're just defining it in the wrong direction. Literally, they're making rooms feel smaller, not larger. First mistake is putting a rug over carpet. The message that you give a buyer when you put a rug over carpet is what are you hiding? Exactly. And in a property that has brand new carpet in it, the last thing you want to do is cover up one of the biggest selling attributes to a home is to have brand new carpet in it. The other is the mix and match of all of these furniture pieces and the undefined elements of it where every space is not finished. The interesting thing about it is an unfinished space shows worse than an empty room. And the worst thing that can happen with an empty room is the interpretation that it looks smaller online until you show up. 80% of buyers see spaces that are empty as being too small or not functional. This makes that percentage even higher because they see this as a non-functional space that's not going to work for them. Don't use something if it's not truly going to benefit the representation of a property. So I look at this and I think they tried to stage on the cheap, right? Right. They didn't bring in enough furniture to finish off the spaces. They just put a few things in these spaces right. and, and defined it improperly. But it really looks like it's well painted. It's got new carpet. Mm -hmm. You don't need to hide anything with staging. That's right. So, um, but they just did it on the cheap and really didn't present the house 
as well as it could have been for sure. That, right? That's true, and and you're correct. You you never want to stage a property cheaply. You you can manage a budget. You do not ever have to break the bank to make a property look good. There are so many different ways that we can accentuate a property without filling it up with furniture, especially right. when it's a space that's of good size, fresh paint, fresh updates. So you, you just never want to go on the cheap because you actually, the end result is you get what you pay for. Right, so our next one is defining spaces. So defining a space, this is a very interesting because when, when we look at this picture, the space is defined, but the space is defined not to a positive point of selling. And in doing this space, there were a huge amount of limitations that we could not get a seller on board with understanding you really need to do more. What is done here is just simply enough to give some cohesive structure to a room. And this is the most that they would allow us to do with their content, not even replace their content. Whenever you have a situation where you have a third family room gathering space, that is a huge value to a property. Right. And if you do not define it well, then it's a, it's a representation of wasted space and unusable space because we have to help buyers understand how you're going to live in the space and it? give purpose to the rooms in the space. Some of them are very obvious, like the kitchens and the bathrooms and the bedrooms, but then when you have extra space, buyers get lost in understanding what am I going to do here. And that's a huge portion of the population. Only about 18% of the population can understand what to do or how to take advantage of a space. Everybody else is lost on how to make a room functional that they don't need. And if they don't need it, they don't see the value in buying the property just because it's there. So David, if the seller had given you license to do what you needed to do, what, what would you do differently in this space? Uh, this room needed much larger furniture, first okay. of all. And we needed to create a defined entertainment space. This room really needed to be the activity zone of right. the home. Kind of the with, bonus room per se. That's right. right. Mm -hmm. With a, a gaming table of some type, whether it's a pool table or a foosball table, or even just another standard table that we define as a game table, this was a huge transition point in this house that had no definition. So repairs, oh, this is a good one. The way I phrase this is if you don't want to do them, your buyers definitely do not want to do right. them. This is where you can really pick the low-hanging fruit to improve the opportunity to sell a house. The first few examples of this are very, very basic that can be handled with magic eraser on paint to help remove scuffs and damage to the walls. If you have paint touch-ups that you need to have done, then you need to match paint properly. If the paint is more than five years old, a lot of people don't understand that you can't just go get the paint color mixed again. You do need to actually take a sample of the paint on the wall because paint dehydrates. And as mm -hmm. paint dehydrates, the color actually changes as it loses its moisture and as light fades the color depending on where it is at in the home. So don't go take a sample behind the light switch plate that's down the hall in the dark. You need to take a sample next to what you're touching up so that it actually will blend in. So, and uh, don't use a paintbrush. That's I, that's the biggest thing is don't use a paintbrush. I have a great tool for this. Uh, Nick, uh, N-I-K, makes a color matching tool and you put it up on the wall mm -hmm. and it reads the color. It's about 300 bucks. You can buy it on Amazon and it saved my clients hundreds, Hun that's if not exactly. thousands of dollars trying to get a co color match of their paint. Um, so. You know, I always talk about this as the best defensive dollar spent, right? Right. You deal with the issues. The buyer doesn't want to buy your problems in this process. They that's want exactly to buy right. a home that is ready to go. If a buyer sees something that's obvious, they start to wonder what is wrong with the house that isn't obvious. So if you're not fixing the nicks in the wall, then what haven't you done in the crawl space, the attic, behind the walls? Those are, it just fundamentally undermines a buyer's desire to buy that's, that home. That's true. And this next couple of pictures here, we were talking about water staining, huge. What water staining is, is the biggest undefined what is this from. Right. And this particular example is a very simple solution because there was no actual leak. This was just an overflowing bathtub that the child left the water running and there happened to be an air vent in the floor that's directly above this room, as you can see the air vent in this picture. Mm -hmm. And that's all that it was. Once it was dry, there was nothing structurally wrong. There was no active water leak. There was no true damage to anything other than the discoloration. And if this is there, then it opens up an unlimited amount of questions and investigation of a property to things that are going to work against any buyer being motivated. It doesn't matter how much they actually love a property. If they right. see something like this, those, right. are, those are unmeasurable fears of what could be. 
And buyers frequently assume the worst, right? That's I right. mean, you could explain to the buyer, well, it was just a leak from there, but th that doesn't matter. They're going to assume that it could be something much more significant, roof, plumbing, whatever it is. So, you know, that's a real showstopper for a buyer to, if you fail to address it, it could cost you tens of thousands of dollars Absolutely. in the process. So adding value with space. I looked at your photos on this one. This is a great space, right? Cool area, mm -hmm. but it, you know, it's unfinished. Uh, but you've defined what could be done with it, right? Absolutely. You've shown its potential. Absolutely. This is this is adding value to missed opportunities of square footage. This is a was a segment of a basement, but by defining it as having a purpose, it gives value to the space, and a buyer can see that there's room to grow here. They're not moving into a home that checks off all the boxes. They've got a little bit of extra space to do something unexpected with. Right. Another great example of it, right? Little nook area turned That's right. into an office, right? De a defining a, defining a, a workspace. And this this particular property, which was very interesting, this is a pass-through. There's a the where I'm standing where this photo is taken, there's a door that exits to the deck, and you go through this other doorway to the living room, which also has French doors. And they just simply used this as a coat closet and never ever envisioned using it what as it a, a valuable right, space. Right, and it exactly. truly is. Well, you think about how many people are working from home nowadays. They're looking for those little nooks and crannies Absolutely. that they can set up an office and have a little bit of privacy. Uh, right. So last lighting, this is a great one here. Believe it or not, there can be something worse than not getting the paint right. The worst thing you can do to a property is not light it correctly. And the thing I encourage sellers to look at very very closely are what are what are the light bulbs that you have you need a natural daylight tone in any property it makes paint colors resonate and it keeps it warm and welcoming whenever we design a space we always bring in ample lighting so that when you walk into a room it's warm and welcoming but whenever a property is being shown they always turn on the overhead lights you want to give maximum brightness to a space so that it actually feels the size that it needs to feel which is what you're selling in square footage so check your light bulbs, replace your light bulbs, believe it or not. 10 year old light bulbs are not the same color that they were whenever you bought the light bulbs and make sure that they're all the same. Yeah, key point, being the photographer in the house, walking into a home that has multicolored lights between the incandescents and the LEDs, which are daylight or LEDs that are different color, really throws the pictures off. Consistency, Consistency is, the is the critical point. Yeah, yeah. If someone wanted to reach out with questions on staging, how would they best reach you? Uh, go to our website, beacondavenport.com. Everything is self-administered. You can submit a request online for a project. You can submit questions directly to us. To have a consultation to, to get your property ready, and the thing that I can't stress more is the sooner you start, the better you will be on time management because getting a property ready to sell, the clock runs out fast. You want to start sooner, and when you do that, you actually get to appreciate your efforts while you're getting the home ready to sell. Absolutely. And the one thing I always tell clients uh, in our wrap-up here is your home will never look better than it does when you're getting ready to sell it. Right. And, and you want to be able to live in that element for a short period of time. And so many of our clients have said, hey, we wish we'd have done this stuff earlier, right? That's right. This is exactly how we want our house to be. And I want to come back to this picture because this is a home you guys stage for us. And I show this because... It was one of our record sales this year, over 50% beyond the list price is what we sold this home for. And you guys really you know, knocked it out of the park when you Thank staged you. this home. Uh, beautifully done. And some of the, uh, uh, the improvements we encouraged the seller to make even before we brought you in were things they said we wish we would had done earlier. They've lived in this home for 20 plus years and, and really you know, bringing us in earlier in this process helps make your life easier. Uh, and then also helps you maximize your return when it comes to time of sale. So uh, we're going to wrap this video up. If you have any questions, uh, you can leave comments down below. Happy to answer any questions. If you are following us on the channel YouTube, please like or subscribe so you get updates on our most recent videos. Thanks so much.